This is Jim Pruitt, and you listen to another episode of the Farm So Hard Podcast. So I farm so hard, the employees want to find me, and then want to hire me. What's 100K to a guy like me? Could you please remind me? Farm so hard, this ain't easy. Working late nights, you best believe me. My grades can only go ace. Never want to see another B unless I'm Jay-Z. Farm so hard, let's get paid. Hey, it's your host, Jim Pruitt, a.k.a. Farmed in ED, and I'm bringing you another episode of the Farm So Hard Podcast. Today, I have another special episode. It's one of our shorter episodes, and it's going to be on the topic of the pharmacotherapy of cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. But before I get into that, I have a major announcement. I have been waiting months, actually over a year now, to release this new platform. I've brought you guys the emergency medicine pharmacy map. I'm bringing you guys in March the first ever emergency medicine pharmacy conference with the Empower Conference. And what I'm going to give you in October is something that has been so special to me. And I'm going to call it the PACU, Pharmacy and Acute Care University. And what this is, guys, is an educational platform. It's a membership program that is designed to maximize the competency of healthcare professionals. Again, all your MDs, all your PharmDs, nurses, everyone who's working in acute care. This is going to be my membership program that provides you guys with the most up-to-date information with master courses, live webinars. We're going to have a forum community there. We're going to have a host of things. But the coolest part is going to be this reference library. And that's going to be something that I want you guys to go to the show notes and go click to the sign up list to be on the wait list so I can give you more information so I don't take this whole episode of talking about it. You guys have to check this out. It's going to be one of the coolest things I've done. It's going to be one of the coolest things in emergency medicine and acute care out right now. So go check the show notes out. Uh, it's going to be all over Twitter. So go check that out. Again, PACU's coming soon, guys. So go check that out. All right, guys. So, cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome is a syndrome of cyclic vomiting, nausea, and abdominal pain, which is often refractory to available antiemetic and analgesics in patients who chronically use cannabis. Some of the hallmark symptoms, or one of the things you're going to see when those patients present, is this compulsive hot bathing, as it actually provides a great relief for these patients. However, cannabis cessation is the only definitive treatment for these patients. But we've tried some different things like capsaicin, dopamine antagonists, and benzodiazepines. Opioid should be avoided as they may exacerbate nausea and vomiting. So let's go ahead and jump into some of the pharmacology. So we really have three agents, capsaicin, dopamine antagonists, and benzodiazepines. So let's look at capsaicin first. One of the mechanism actions that's been proposed for capsaicin is that it stimulates the transient receptor potential villanoid 1, or TRPV1, which I'm going to say for the rest of this podcast, and that's going to be a G-coupled protein receptor on peripheral tissue. This TRPV1 interacts with the endocannabinoid system, resulting in symptom relief. When looking at dosing, of course, we don't have a pill here. We're talking about a gel, and it's going to be a two to three inch strip that we're going to apply potentially to the abdomen or the back of the arms. I really haven't found great data saying to use one versus one place versus the other, but that's what we have here. One thing to look out for is don't use this stuff on your bare hands, guys. It's going to burn the living crap out of you. So avoid touching eyes, mouth, or genitals after application. And you should be wearing gloves and your patient should be wearing gloves when using capsaicin. Then we have our dopamine antagonist. And that's going to work by antagonizing dopamine receptor that's going to be upregulated in chronic cannabis use. And it's going to target D2 receptors in the GI tract in the chemoreceptor trigger zone. So hopefully that's going to stop this nausea and vomiting. The two agents that we use quite a bit, not the only, but the two that we use more commonly is going to be Haldol and the D, Joperidol. And the doses we're going to see for Haldol is going to be anywhere from 1 to 5 milligrams. And for Joperidol, there's a pretty wide range where anywhere from 0.625 to 2.5 milligrams. And it's going to be given IV or IM for Joperidol. And you can even potentially give this PO for Haldol, but it kind of defeats the purpose if the patient is vomiting quite a bit. 
Some things to look out for are your traditional extrapyramidal reactions in your QTC prolongation in those patients that has a cardiac history. Lastly, we're gonna have our benzos, and this is gonna work by stimulating the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA to reduce nausea and vomiting anticipation. And this is gonna decrease the activation of cannabinoid receptor type one, CB1, in the frontal cortex. So we have a few different mechanisms here that could be at play when it comes to benzos. And the one that we actually have some studies on, not the only one, was gonna be clonazepam. Some things to look out for is the drowsiness, confusion, and respiratory depression. And again, make sure you caution a patient that has hepatic or renal dysfunction. That's really going to be a big deal in chronic dosing, but I have to throw that out there. All right, guys, let's go ahead and move into some data. So the first trial that we're going to look at is going to be done by common colleagues that was done this year in 2021. And what it was was a retrospective cohort study that had 201 patients. What they looked at was topical capsaicin in adult and pediatric patients. And what they found was that a greater proportion of patients who received capsaicin achieved their primary outcome at 55% compared to 21% when looking at capsaicin compared to no capsaicin. And they also found a reduction in the time to discharge following capsaicin administration, about half, with six hours for no capsaicin and about 3.7 hours for patients that got capsaicin. So I thought that was very interesting. So I'm gonna look at one more study and that was done by USURF and colleagues in 2021. It was a retrospective analysis looking at 55 patients and they looked at the same thing capsaicin versus no capsaicin. And what they found was that capsaicin administration within two rounds of medication treatment had significantly shorter treatment stays. So they had a decreased length of stay in the ER. However, there is no difference in 24 hour bounce back or emission rate between those two groups. So that was pretty, pretty cool. But let's look at our dopamine antagonist. And it was a study done by Roberto and colleagues this year. It was an RCT with about 33 patients, and they looked at a few things. They looked at Haldol at a lower dose at 0.05 mg per kg, and they looked at Haldol at 0.1 mg per kg, comparing that to 8 of Zofran. And what they found was that Haldol at either dose kicked Zofran's butt. And I wouldn't be myself if I didn't throw out a random case series that was done on Clonopin. And this is done by Cleef Fetz and colleagues. And again, sorry if I butchered the name. And they looked at using Clonopin PO at 0.5 milligrams Q8. And what they found was that two patients actually had relief after one dose. It could have been a host of things. I'm not too big on case series, but again, they said the rest of the four patients total actually had symptom release after 24 hours. I'm not too big on this, but you like it, I love it. Um, I'm just including it for completeness. Um, that's not something I'm going to be looking at to add in my therapy. So that's all I have. If you guys want more, go check out the Pharmacy Pearl on our website. Uh, we can get you shuttled over there and make sure you sign up for an email list so you don't miss out on more in-depth information. That handout is gold, guys, and I use it tons of times when I'm recommending things in the ER and, and for patients that go to the unit and I'm up there talking to their docs. I just snatch that bad boy out and I say, hey, this is the data on this here, and here's the a, a summary of the evidence, and it usually goes well. They can't turn it down when you actually practice evidence-based medicine when they're practicing emotion-based medicine. So keep that in mind. But of course, guys, these episodes are not long. So make sure you go follow us on all of our social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Check us out there on Farm So Hard. We're the only podcast named that, so you it won't be hard to find us. If you want to get on our email list, you can go to the show notes and I got a link for you there. And please keep a lookout for the pack you because I want to see you in the pack you and it's going to be a phenomenal thing that we have going every month it's going to be something new it's going to be something great and it's not just going to be me it's going to be experts from all over from a multidisciplinary team and we're building something that you guys have asked for so 
There you go. I have that there. The wait list for that will be in the show notes as well. So go check that out, guys. And I'm super excited to bring this to you guys in October, along with all the other stuff. So thank you, guys. And remember, you don't have to be a pharmacist. You don't have to work in the ED. But everything you do, make sure you farm so hard. Ozzie scratches his head. Whatever she's looking for, it isn't in there. Perfect, perfect, perfect.